right. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another last minute Sunday NFL betting live stream with yours truly, Matt, aka Jedi Modi, and my good friend, Andrew Kim, aka the Parlay Doc. Andrew, how are we doing? Good, good, good. How is it going over there in Colorado, Matt? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I actually went to the Colorado football game yesterday, which was uh, they, yeah. they lost, which wasn't fun. But I never been to a game there. I mean, granted, I just I just moved here. Uh, not quite as exciting as it was earlier in the year when when they were really good and they were the talk yeah. of college football. But it was fun. It was a good time. We uh, tailgated. One of my one of my friends, mutual friends, got tickets to work. They they uh, had a pretty nice tailgate set up. So it was good. It was good times. How about you? Good, good, good. I mean, uh, I guess uh, celebrating a meaningless, but uh, I guess it's a win for the Bears. But uh, that's uh, it makes a difference in in the draft, though. Exactly. Actually, there is meaning. There is meaning. So I'll take that back. There is meaning in the draft. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Meaningless, but also quite meaningful if you want the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, that's true. We did solidify that pretty much. I mean, at least greatly upped our chances. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. For those of you yeah. tuning in, I'm, I'm sure you know the drill by now, but we go through every game on the slate. We give out um, at least one pick for each game. Sometimes we'll have a pass. That happens. Um, and then at the end, we'll do some some degenerate same game parlays. Uh, but before we get going, number one, everyone here, appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure to get all of those questions, comments, whatever in the chat. We love um, uh, we love going with the chat and talking about and just interacting with the chat as much as we can. But then also, Andrew is starting a new venture adventure whatever you want to call it uh do you want to talk andrew do you want to just talk through what you're doing recently and then we can also um direct them into the link in the description of this and i'll put it in the chat as well yeah no i, I appreciate the shout out to my link so for those of you you know you who've been following me on twitter for over the years i appreciate it so what i'm going to be doing is, is just kind of a, a little journey slash experiment um and basically i've started a new video series called uh, maximum grind and i've created a new channel for that that matt will be putting the link for and i'm going to preface it by saying this most of you a lot of you who followed me over the years know me for degenerate parlays and stuff but uh i'm not gonna lie it's also very wasteful so the whole point of maximum grind is going to be exactly what the title is for those of you who are like man i am sick and tired of all these fake touts and whales who claim they're making a ton of money. And if they're making a ton of money, why are they selling you $5, $10 packages, right? Do they really need it then? So I'm going to just do a very transparent, truthful, meticulous grind to see how much can, how much profit can we milk if we utilize software? And if we focus on boring, but risk-free arbitrage betting, low risk middle bets, instead of wasting those bonus bets that you get awarded actually just converting bonus bets to cash instead of throwing out darts all the time. And uh, something that I probably have not utilized enough of is uh, churning through those playthrough requirements to unlock rewards um, and then using that reward to turn to cash. For example, real quick, and I'll end with this, this weekend on DraftKings, many of you use DraftKings. There was a football uh, promo that from Friday to the end of today, if you could bet through $2,500, I know that sounds like a lot, $2,500 of football wagers where the odds of each wager had to be minus 200 or better. And most people are like, I'm not going to risk money to unlock a $500 bonus bet. I churned through $2,500 of wagers and I lost $6. Okay. Lost $6. So almost no good. risk. I unlocked the $500 free bet. I used software to find free bet conversions, and then I bet the $500 free bet on DraftKings this morning and then bet the other side on FanDuel, and I'm going to end up with $360-something of profit. So $6 risk to churn through $2,500 of playthrough to unlock a $500 bonus bet to convert to $360 bucks of cash. I just made $360-something without any risk involved. So... That's the type of stuff we'll be doing on Maximum Grind. It's not for everybody, but if you're like, I don't care about sexy, I care about money, that's what the journey is going to be about. And I'll make sure on my channel I have my Picket stuff, and you can follow on Picket, you can follow my videos, and that's what I'll be doing on Max Grind, basically. So, Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. I think there is a lot of people that just like bet a thousand parlays, and then they hit one, and then they just market the crap out of that. And then yeah. they get new audience and then everybody catches on. It's it's a whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, that that, that sounds good to me. I mean, like the risk-free money, everyone could use that for uh, for Christmas this year. So 
That's um, what I'm saying. If anything, follow until you save up for Christmas and then go back to your plus 5,000 parlays, guys. Yeah, exactly. Or just use the profits you make from this to fund your plus 5,000 parlays. And then if there you get you go. cash, it's it's with free money. There you go. So yeah, that all sounds good. I'll be following along that as well. Um, all right, we can get started now. And again, those of you tuning in, get all those questions, comments, anything in the chat. First game, and I'm sorry, I did not have time to make the graphics. So you're just going to see our beautiful shining faces this morning. Uh, Browns versus Ravens. Pretty good game. Two good teams. Ravens have been on fire. Uh, what do you got for this one? So I'm going to keep it simple on this one. I'm I'm just rolling with the Ravens to keep rolling, basically. And um, and I, look, I, not a the best number in the world. That makes me 100% confident, but I feel pretty good about it. I like Ravens just to win and cover a touchdown. So Ravens minus six and a half. Um, you can still get it at pretty good odds. Minus 108 on Barstool, even if you're betting it right now. I just think that the way that the Ravens have been rocking and rolling, um, I mean, Lamar Jackson is having just like an amazing year. Uh, the Browns O-line is just decimated at this point. I mean, you have people like Jones and Conklin and Willis Jr. and all out, and you have a makeshift O-line week to week. So I just I don't think they're going to be able to get the run game going. I don't think they're going to even have enough time for deeper routes to develop that. I think it's going to be a struggle. Obviously, I, I think they're D- is decent. So I think it's going to be a close game for maybe, you know, the first half, but I think gradually as the game progresses, the Ravens offense will start pulling away and just grind them down. And I think you're going to see enough three and outs from this banged up O-line on the Browns that uh, I do have confidence that the Ravens will cover minus six and a half. So I'm just going to go straight up just Ravens to cover their spread. So. Sure. Yeah. I don't have a play on the spread. I think if I were to guess, I think I'd actually go opposite of you. I think I would just guess this would be like a classic hard fought NFC or AFC North close game. Um, but I do think the Ravens are going to win. My play is a player prop, and I'm taking Kareem Hunt over 23 and a half rushing yards. It's minus 115. I bet MGM. This one, I'll admit, is almost a strictly positive EV value play. Um, I didn't really know what what to expect in this game, but like you're getting an awesome price at, at bet MGM at minus 115. Every other book has this in the minus 130s, and then Fandle has his over under at like 27 and a half. Oh, which, is, which is yeah, an insane difference. And I have noticed over the course of time that FanDuel, when they're that much of an outlier on player props, they tend to actually be the sharper one compared to everybody else. Hmm. I'm guessing they have some sort of DFS algorithm specifically to price player props, but um, outliers on FanDuel is to me is not like, oh, hammer that at FanDuel. Um, and I did look into the matchup a little bit. It's a super low total, like 23 and a half is super low. And you understand, A, when you consider the O-line injuries that you talked about, be considering the fact that the Ravens defense is awesome, but I still just think it's too low at 23 and a half after a slow start. When he signed after um, Chubb got hurt, he's had 30 plus rushing yards in, in his last four games. Yeah. Right? Or, sorry. He's that. sorry. I meant to say he's cleared this over under in the last four games while yeah. also clearing 30 in those games as well. No, so, you're right. I'll, I can read them off for you. 38, 55, 31, and even, and here's an interesting one, 47 before San Francisco, San Francisco's like defensive woes happened in the last few games. So when they were still a bit more stout, yeah. he had a 47 against them, which is very interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. So this isn't me necessarily saying like the Browns are going to have a good successful running game. And I know that Jerome Ford is back, but the ankle injuries always scare me off. And even if they split carries, like this, this whole thing is not me selling you that Cream Hunt's going to have an awesome game. Like twenty-four rushing yards is not a lot, and that's all we're that's all we're talking yeah. about here. So, so yeah. that that was my play in that one. Um, next up, we're going Texans versus Bengals. I, so similar to you in the previous one, I just took the Bengals minus five and a half straight up. I uh, got it at minus one hundred eight at DraftKings. Yeah. Um, th so this one, the line movement has actually moved in the opposite of 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 where I'm leaning. Like. It was yesterday at Bengals minus six and a half. Now yeah. it's moved all the way down to five and a half. I don't really get it. I still like the Bengals in this one. Um, I'm not scared off by the wide receiver injuries. I think Jamar Chase plays because at least there's no structural damage. So it's really just kind of like a, a pain tolerance thing. Yeah. I think it and, moved after the Higgins announcement, right? I think. Yeah, because yeah. he's been, yeah, with the hit, with the hammy injury, he, he's been pronounced out, but. Yeah. To me, I think that like after last week, the, the Texans are the darlings of the NFL. They they just smashed the Bucs. They threw for 400 million yards. Everybody's high on them after last week, but the Bucs defense is is not good. And this Bengals yeah. defense, I think, is is awesome. And I love their defensive coordinator. And I just I love the fact that their defensive coordinator has a custom built game plan depending on the offense. So I think that they're gonna have something creative for CJ Stroud. And it's just like, it's a, it's a classic rookie. Like the week before 
Last week, C.J. Stroud was awful against the literal worst team in the NFL and the Panthers. Then he blew up against the Bucs. It's like it's just a classic rookie where he's very talented. So you, you see the highs, but they're not consistent. Yeah. So I could see the the uh, the Texans struggling on offense in this one after last week. I think that um, it's just a, a fade of basically what happened. I also think that the Bengals with without T Higgins are just going to be able to move the ball against the Texans defense, which is terrible. So I laid the five and a half. Honestly, the, the way that the money's going, you might be able to catch it at five if, yep. if, if you wait. So this might be a CLV L for me, but I like the Bengals to cover regardless. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think there is a chance this could move to five. I was about to say the same thing. And uh, but I, I I'm on I'm on with you. I mean, independently, I already had pegged down Bengals minus five and a half on MGM for uh, I think minus one ten where it was when I got it. So yeah, I, I have Bengals and yeah, I, I have obviously concerns about some of the wide receiver stuff, but I will say, as as cheesy as I sound, like uh, a healthy Joe, Joe Burrow, I will say I didn't think. I, I truly thought earlier on for some reason that Joe Burrow was a flash in the pan, but uh, when he's healthy, he, he finds a way to elevate his team and, and literally, literally wills his team to win that. I think yeah. as long as he's healthy and he can actually move and put weight on that leg, which it seems like he has been now multiple weeks in a row, I have way more faith uh, that the Bengals offense can keep humming and he'll find a way to get, uh, you know, even second stringers involved. So I, I am going to roll with Bengals. Uh, one player prop I have, small, I, I would just say half of what I usually do, um, Devin Singletary over 13 and a half uh, rushing attempts. And I know he, has, he hasn't been clearing that quite a bit, but you have to realize um, he's been splitting work with Pierce. But Pierce, uh, if he's not going to play again, which it looks like it's maybe the second week in a row that he's just not going to be available. Then. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, if, if you look at those uh, Bengals defensive metrics, uh, pretty stout against the pass, uh, not so much against the run. They're willing to let you just run it up the gut and give you those small chunk plays. Yeah. That, um, as long as it doesn't become a blowout from first half onwards, I think just by having it somewhat close for half of a game, like I think it's doable. So I, I'm, I'm going with uh, Devin Singletary for over 13 and a half rushing yards. Uh, it's a little juiced because I do think most people think this is going to play out minus. Ugh, minus 145 on DraftKings. I'm not going to go buck wild on it just because I don't like sure. the, the line, but that's that's one of the player props I have in this game. So, Sure. Yeah, I didn't have I didn't have a player prop. But um, all right, we can move on. Next game, 49ers-Jaguars. Probably the best game of the 1 p.m. slate, that and the Browns-Ravens, I would say. Uh, yep. So what do you got for us in this one? I I got, uh, you know, I actually am going to go. To, I'm going to go on a total on this one, um, and the total actually has been dropping, which I, I get, I get. But um, I'll, I'll take over 44. It's not so it, it even drifted to lower on DraftKings this morning. So I'm going to lock it in literally as we speak. Over 44 uh, minus 110 on DraftKings, and my rationale is. Uh, you know, you're you're playing uh, a juiced up uh, Jags team who's who's riding a high right now, and they got a lot of positive vibes going. San Francisco just hasn't been, um, you know, as stout and has looked vulnerable and getting torched a little bit at times on D. That uh, I think the Jags can put up some points, but you also have uh, a lot of variables coming back. You get uh, Debo finally back, and I think Debo. I think more and more that I look at it, his absence was such a huge factor in how disjointed their offense has been. I mean, he opens up so much possibilities with so many different play calls that I think that's going to be a huge factor of San Francisco getting back on track on putting up points. So, um, so I like the total on this one. I know that people are going to say, you know, San Francisco is going to shut these guys down. I don't know about that. So uh, I like the over, so I'm going to go with over 44. Usually I'm not on a lot of totals, but I like this total. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't have a play on the main line. I think I would lean Jaguars because you can get the three and a half number. I think the Jaguars yeah. might just be good. But the 49ers, I agree with you about Debo. I also think Trent Williams being back is massive as well. Yeah. Uh, for this one is when I is where I have one of my pumped up props. Uh -huh. I'm taking Ayuk 100 plus receiving yards. It's uh, plus 340 at Caesars, so it is pretty juicy. Okay. Um, I like the fact that Debo is back in this one. I think yeah. that it opens up more for Ayuk. Um, and Ayuk, I think, is just for, in terms of their pure receiver, just drop back receiver. He's probably their best one. They use yeah. and Debo is awesome, but they use him in a little bit more of a gadget role. Uh, it's a very good gadget role, and it's a consistent gadget role. So it's not like some Taysom Hill madness, although yeah. Hill's yeah. been good, whatever. Um, but like Ayuk has had games this year, 129 receiving yards with with Debo, 148 with Debo. And their last game, 
against the Bengals, he he had 109 receiving yards against the good defense. And the Jags defense, if you look at advanced stats, DVOA paints them in a very good light. But for whatever reason, teams pass a lot on them and they pass successfully. And it might just be in terms of yards. So they might be like a bend and break thing. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that I grind a ton of Jags film, but they give up 263 passing yards per game. That's 30th in the NFL. They have the most pass attempts against them as well. Part of that is game script. Part of that is also because they um, are top, I think they're third in DVOA and, and against the run. They're really good against the run. So I think that this is going to be a back and forth matchup, kind of like kind of like you said. And I think that the 49ers are going to have some success passing the ball. Uh, and I think Purdy, you know, a couple weeks removed from the concussion, I think it's going to look a little bit better. So I like Ayuk in this one. Uh, real quick, we'll answer Scott's question. Yes, we are taking questions. Um, so anything you have, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, what up, Scott? But yeah, so that we just talked about 49ers Vikings. We can move on. Or sorry, 49ers Jaguars. We can move on to Saints Vikings. Uh, this one I actually have another pumped up prop. <laughs> Didn't plan on having two in a row, but this one is Rashid Shahid. Or sorry, Rashid Shahid. 60 plus receiving yards plus 390 at DraftKings. He's Ooh. the ultimate boom, boomer bus receiver. He's yeah. either going to have zero yards or he's going to have more than 60. 60 is kind of where I cut it off because that could just be one one deep bomb. Yeah. Um, I, I like Rashid Shahid. I like the fact that Derek Carr also seems to like him. I mean, everybody fell in love with that mic'd up clip from a couple weeks ago yeah. where he told, like, just run deep and I'll hit you. And that, that was the game in which he had 100 in, I think, what, 29? Yeah, like, something was 150 100, maybe. 153 receiving there you go. against the Colts. There you go. Yeah. Which I'm not expecting that. But they love to draw up deep shots to Shahid. His main line is 32 and a half receiving yards. And only once this year has he cleared that and not hit 60. And in that one game, I think he had exactly 32, if I remember correctly. So the Vikings defense is admittedly better than it was at the beginning of the year, but I think they'll be able to move the ball a little bit with Josh Dobbs. So I don't think that the Saints are just going to run it the entire time. I also think yeah. that if they do, they're not going to have a ton of success doing so. So I think that they're going to try and deep dial up a couple deep ones to Shahid. And for plus 390 for, for 60 yards, for someone like him that could have 60 yards in one play, For I thought the, I thought the value was there. So that was my play for Saints-Vikings. What do you got? I like that. I like. I mean, I was on. Remember, I think I was on him to last get week. Receiving yards, but he it didn't come through. There were a couple shots, but it just yeah, boomer, boomer bust. So yeah, um, I got a couple in this game, even though it could be a god. I don't know why I always focus on ugly games for some of my volumes of bets. Um, so here's here's a couple that I like on the main line. I I don't really know, honestly. I don't have a strong feeling. I I probably lean towards Vikings plus three. I don't think Dobbs is that bad, so I'm not yeah. gonna. Not really going to touch that, but um, I've been enamored by these like one pass props lately. So another one pass prop I'm going to try to shoot for on this game is Foster Moreau uh, over 4.5 receiving yards on Barstool uh, minus 110. And I just it's weird. I guess it just comes down to is he even going to get used? And, you know, are they going to pass him the damn ball? Because if you look at it, uh, 23 yards, zero. 33, 33, 6, 20. So he, he's basically exceeded this in five out of six. So um, to give me minus 110 over four and a half, he just needs one lob, like one yeah. peel off for 10 block, just th lob it to him. So high risk, but I think it requires one reception probably. So Foster Moreau over four and a half receiving yards. I haven't done a lot of TDs because it's so hit or miss, but um, God, Taysom Hill, he's scored three three games in a row, and it just seems like he has just become his typical Taysom Hill self, the, the gadget play at the goal yeah. line. Um, and I don't no faith that the Vikings could stop a massive bulldozer like him if they're close enough within one or two yards. So uh, I will take a little sprinkle on Taysom Hill anytime touchdown to score for the fourth game in a row. At plus 225, I'm surprised it's a, that high. I guess it comes down to his usage, which is a gamble. But if they get close enough within five yards, I'm sure he's going to get one or two carries. Yeah. So I will roll with Taysom Hill, um, plus 225, anytime touchdown. And finally, one last one is um, Alvin Kamara, over 31 and a half receiving yards. So those are going to be my three. I have three plays in a garbage game, but I got three <laughs> plays for you guys. So, Sometimes that's but, where you can find the best value is these garbage yeah, games. Yeah. Because I, I think the defense is going to be very suspect on that Viking side. So, 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I like all three of those. The Foster Moreau one, they just their car just seems to love him. Like he followed him from the Raiders to the Saints yeah, even after that, and they signed him after the health scare. So maybe so, yeah. unless you as the viewers see something, maybe I miss some piece of Saints news that he's hampered or hindered. But like, I don't get it. I'm like, maybe I am a piece. Of, I'm missing a piece of news. I'm I'm not like on the blog wires for the Saints, yeah. but it's like I don't know. It's like one pass, and he's done that consistently. So give me Foster Moreau, man. Yeah, my guess is that it's just because um they have so many tight ends like they they have hills technically a tight end they have Jawan yeah. johnson and then they have yeah. i guess i don't know if michael thomas is playing in this game but they have a couple of receivers so i think there's just a lot of mouths to feed but yeah i mean there is yeah, there's a lot of mouths to feed yeah. just gets one target and yeah we're, we're good there so all right next up packers versus steelers what do you got in this one Oh, interestingly, another total. I, I don't know why I usually don't do totals, but I am going to roll with uh, a first half under. Oof, I hate unders. And I even hate unders, too. I, I took the over on the 49ers game. I'm taking an under, and I hate unders. But I'm going to take a first half under 19.5, which is very low, on DraftKings uh, minus 118. Uh, the Packers, just anecdotally, I mean, I'm not going to give you some stats. It's just they've been notorious slow starters, and first quarters especially, that – um, although the Steelers are not the Steelers of old, I, I expect if, if the trends stay true, that, uh, the Tom Lennon and the Steelers are going to play them tough and it's going to be one of these brutal, ugly games, just kind of like that Browns game potentially that, mm -hmm. um, I am going to roll with a halftime under first half under, under 19.5 points. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Steelers offense is like basically in the second half. So only the time they can do anything. Um, yep. I took the Steelers straight up Steelers money line. It's at minus 160 at Sport Trade if you're in Colorado or New Jersey. If not, it's minus 170 at Caesars. Obviously, I don't love the odds on that one, but in what world are, is Jordan Love heading to Pittsburgh and, and beating the Steelers? I'm sorry. There's just, I don't see a single scenario in which the Steelers do not win this game. So I didn't want to mess with the spread because <laughs> it's a disgusting three point game. I would not be shocked. I just have a hard time, at least yeah. with the Steelers, you know exactly what you're getting. They're, they're going to play hard. They're yep. generally not going to beat themselves. They're going to have a couple of timely plays. And the Packers like the opposite of that. You don't know what to expect. They love to beat themselves. Um, so this is a rare, I actually put two units straight up. Not I, I risked, I should say two units, not to win. Oh, two units. All right. So I, all right. I risk two units on this one. I, I don't do that a lot. Um, but the Steelers are just that team that's not good that just keeps winning. And, and the Packers are like the opposite of that. They're completely unreliable. They love beating themselves. Um, and in Pittsburgh, I just cannot fathom a scenario in which the Packers win, which probably means they will, because that's just how things go. Um, <laughs> so Packers, Steelers, what do you got in this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, so the, the first half under, but yes, I... Oh, yeah, you, sorry, I forgot you went first. You no, said no, that. but I mean, in terms of teams, I, I actually don't disagree. I mean, I, I would roll with the Steelers, basically, because... I just, as much as I thought Jordan Love was going to play out this year, he just hasn't, and it's disappointing. And I, I don't yeah. think he's going to perform well if you look at his stats when he's under pressure. And, you know, I, I think he's going to be pressured all game long. Um, you know, yeah. I don't know if they'll get to him and have a ton of sacks, but they're, he's going to be pressured all game, and they're going to bring it nonstop. That it's going to be a struggle um, for, for the Packers offense today. That I, I would go steal or spread, or I could actually see the value. And people, again, people get always – you know, a, a little bit distracted by, oh, it's like juiced, but it's it's not about juiced in isolation. It's just the value. I mean, I mean, if yeah. you look at probability and odds and you're like, they should win X amount of times out of X amount of times and you see it as value, I definitely understand the the Steelers money line angle. So I, I, I don't hate it, honestly. So I might even think about doing that with you later. So yeah, I just didn't want to mess with the spread because I just, yeah. between, between those, those two teams. Um, yeah, I, I forgot that you went first on that one, but question here from Scott. Um, OddsJam does not show trends or anything like that. They're, I mean, I think we both use OddsJam. I still use them for EV, and I think Andrew uses them for his the recent maximum grind thing he's doing for churning through bonuses and stuff. But if you want trends and historical data, it, it, OddsJam would not be your place to go for that. It's still a good product, even though I don't work there anymore. Um, it's still a good product. But for trends specifically, that's what you're looking for. You, you got to go somewhere else. They do have an app. I don't know if that's still active, the Odd Jam Props app. Yeah, I would say for player props and player trends, props.cash, I like it just because it's so uh, visually, aesthetically pleasing and easy yeah. to read. Props.cash so, is yeah. awesome. Yeah, if you okay. sign up for props.cash, use promo code MODI25. No big deal, helps me out. Um, <laughs> but all right, we can move on to the next one. Titans versus Bucks. Guys, 
I don't know if it's just a, a bad year, but I feel like every single game there's like seven just total slop fests. Yeah, this is one yeah. of them. Um, so I'll let you go first. No, you just went first. I'm all mixed up. Um, I got Titans plus three on this one. It's minus 115 at that MGM. I love getting the field goal. I would not touch it at two and a half. So I need to make sure that those odds are still current. I, I That field goal is, is important. So it looks like some books still have it at plus three, depending where your location is, like the Circas have it at plus three. Um, I love taking the points here. Why are the Bucks getting a field goal? Oh, yeah. They started they started three and one and now they've lost four straight. They're just not good. Yeah. Their defense, what was supposed to be their calling card, is also not good. They just got annihilated, shredded by Stroud. I'm not saying Will Levis is CJ Stroud, but I do think that he can sling it. I do like Will Levis. I think I think he's decent. And I also think that the uh Titans defense is significantly better than the Texans. So it's not like the Bucks are gonna have mm-hmm. the same offensive success. So I kind of view the Steelers in the same light as, or sorry, the Titans in the same light as the Steelers, where they're just like a tough, hard-nosed team that's hard to beat, and you generally know what you're getting. The Titans are a little bit more, um, have a wider, a wider uh, variety. I can't think of the word, but like they're a little bit hit, more hit or miss than the Steelers, but I kind of view them in the same light, like a Vrabel coached team. So give me the points with the Titans here, plus three. Again, I would not touch it at two and a half. Uh, yeah, so Titans. Uh, yeah, I, I I like the Titans on the spread as well because look, I, I I'm I'm impressed. I I'm I'm impressed by Will Levis. Um, yeah, I mean, is he a raw talent that needs to get more experience, more reps to work on his timing, know when to not force it in no window? Sure, all those things. But you know what? He actually has an arm, and he's actually not afraid. I will say that he's not afraid to throw. We'll it. swing it. Yeah. yeah, and it really has opened up options for the Titans offense. And even look, even last week, uh, yeah, they lost. What? Right? They lost. But uh, you know what? He kept them in it all the way up until that last drive. There was still a chance. Yeah. Um, and and as long as you know that you got a chance and you have a QB willing to throw, um, I think I think he's they've got the better quarterback than the Bucks do. Honestly, even even at this raw level. So, um, we like you said, you know what you're getting. I like the Levis factor. Um, so I don't understand um, the way that the lines are made right now that I would roll uh, with the Titans as well. So Titans, that, that was it. I don't, I'm not very interested in many player props in this yeah. ugly, ugly game, but I, I like the sides and I'll take the Titans for sure. That, that was something I came up with on my own as well. So we are sure. both on the same page on that one. Yeah, sure. Um, all right. Falcons Cardinals, another total slop. Uh, what do you got in this one? Oh, I, I used my pass on this one because I have yeah. no interest. You're I know people pass. are trying to hype hype it up. What was it? My, Mur, Kyler Murray's, you know, Murray's back. back. And I have no clue. Is he even mentally checked in? Would you would you be mentally checked in with the season you're having? You're like, this is my first game back and it's pointless. I mean, I, I don't even know at this point. So I have no interest in this game whatsoever. I'm not even going to waste risking my money on, on a slop fest like this. So I, I just official... Give me a full hall pass on this sucker. So totally, totally fair. Um, I do have the Cardinals on this one, plus two and a half. Uh, you can get them. I actually got a bad price. You can get them at minus one of five at Caesars. I got it at minus one fifteen. So that is a CLVL on that one. Um, any chance I can get to fade the Falcons and fade Arthur Smith, I will take. That guy's a loser, a complete and utter loser idiot who is too stubborn to use his best players be- simply because <laughs> it, it makes him mad. He would rather give the ball to uh, Tyler Algier and to Johnny Smith, then elite talents like um, tight end uh, Kyle Pitts and running back Bijan Robinson, literally because he's mad about people asking him about it. So he wants to just prove himself right. And that it's Adam Gase. It's Matt Patricia. It's Matt Nagy. It's these idiot buffoon head coaches that think they're smarter. It's Josh McDaniels that like, I know it's best. And I'm literally so spiteful. You cannot convince me otherwise why they don't give the ball to Bijan in the red zone and they give it to Algier. It's solely out of spite and in, in, in stubbornness and idiocy. So any chance I can get to fade those idiots, I will. They lost to freaking Josh Dobbs last week who legitimately didn't know what the plays were. He had to ask this team, like, you're running this route, right? And they lost. And the Cardinals are, are not good. But I actually do think we are going to get a motivated Kyler Murray, mostly because he's playing for his job. Um, sure. If, well, if he true. stinks yeah. and they stink, then they're just going to draft – because they have two first-round picks. So they're just going to draft Drake May – or uh, Caleb Williams. Like if the Bears go number one and they get Williams, they're just going to get May. So I do think he's going to play well. I also like the fact that they're getting James Conner back. I think that they could surprise some people, not 
like, you know, I'm not saying they're going to be good, but just not be a total train wreck. So I like, I like the Cardinals in this one. I got them plus, like I said, two and a half. If you want to take their money line at plus uh, 120, looks like plus 122 is the best price there. You could sprinkle that as well. Um, but before we move on to the next one, another question from Scott. Um, Parlay Doc, what's your background? I see you have a Twitter. Where else can I follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Parlay Doc uh, on YouTube. If you look up the YouTube usernames, Parlay Doc, and then on Picket for Picket. Um, I just started going back to consistently using Picket, which is kind of a transparent um, way that you can follow along with people's picks. Um, so I've been, as part of a new video series uh, that I'm doing with. Um, uh, arbitrage betting and low hold like you could follow me on picket as well i'm just warning you if you follow me on picket you have to look at the labels i put on the bet and if it says arbitrage you have to bet both sides you can't just blindly bet my bets where followers of mine have gotten upset and i tried to explain i'm not the typical sports better on picket i'm betting playing both sides to squeeze out guaranteed money so yeah and the odds are really important on that as well so don't take yeah. both sides if the odds are different yeah um, exactly so, all right, next up, Lions versus Chargers. Um, I actually am excited for this game. I think it's going to be a good one. Yes. Um, I have a player prop here. I have uh, Jamison Williams under 16 and a half receiving yards. Um, so, he, Jane, uh, excuse me, Jamison Williams has played 12 games in his career. I'm going to read out his receiving yards in all 12 games. 0-0-0. 0, 0, 0. <laughs> 41. 0-0-0-0. Zero, 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 zero. 2 53, 0, 16. So not good. He's had more games with zero than he has had with yards. Yes. Uh, the most targets he's gotten in a game is six, of which he caught zero. He plays 17% of the snaps. I don't know what the issue is. I loved him in college. I thought he was going to be awesome in the NFL. Something just seems off. And the thing that scares me a lot is the fact that he was supposed to be their deep threat receiver. Like that's why they signed him to catch the deep yeah. ball, to stretch out the defense. And then they traded for Donovan Peoples Jones, who's not a world beater, but he's like a functional professional receiver, which has not been the case with Jamison Williams. So I don't think he's going to play. He, he barely played pr prior to that. I don't see, I, I don't know. I just, he hasn't given us a reason to believe in him. So I'm going to continue to not believe in him, especially the fact that they showed us with their actions that they don't believe in him by trading for Donovan Peoples Jones and like Montgomery's healthy, um, yeah. um, Amon Ross healthy, even like Josh Reynolds, who is is like a just a, a fine third receiver. He's getting healthier. They like Laporta. There's too many yeah. options. And if he's just going to continue to hurt them, like zero receptions on six targets is disgusting. So that was my that was uh, my official play in this one. I do really like the Lions. I just couldn't find a price that I liked because like the value just didn't seem there. Mm -hmm. I think if I was if I was leaning main lines, I mean, I don't know. I don't trust the Chargers. The fact that they've looked good the past couple of weeks, like congrats, they beat the Bears and the Jets. No offense, that is not super impressive. Um, so I would take the the Lions to cover the spread, but I don't actually have anything on it in my official play that I do have a half unit on is the Jamison Williams one. So, anyways, what do you got? Yeah, I it's not fair to listeners. So I know you can't tell, but like right when the lines came out last week, I took Lions uh, minus one at basically almost even odds at Bet Online. Dot AG. AG, yeah, yeah. So one of these, I don't know. They pay out your money, so I, I, I get yeah, a little, yeah. I, I get a little worried at times with these like mm -hmm. overseas books. But um, so yeah, I, I love that because I do think the Lions are going to just win this outright. Because in my opinion, everyone's like the Chargers are back. It's fool's gold. You beat my Bears. Um, you beat so, Tyson Bajan and Zach Wilson. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. You beat. You beat. You beat two two terrible QBs, and yeah. now you're paying. You're playing a, a balanced team. I'll say a complete balanced team. Balanced team. I wouldn't say world beaters, but a balanced team. And when you're playing a complete team, when you have so many deficiencies, I think it's going to be close. And I think it's going to be fun. I, I really hope more yeah, than I agree. Fun yeah. game, but uh, and the, I think both sides are going to be able to move the ball. But I just have more faith that, like I said, the lines are a more complete package. So. When I saw that come out, when like the opening lines came out and you gave me lines minus one at basically almost even money, I was like, I'm taking it. So I was all over that. So it's not fair to you guys, but yeah, I, I, if you can get it under a field goal, I lean lines. I think the lines are going to just pull away eventually. Um, I do like, I think they're sneaky. It's not the best. It's not the best odds, but Monty, uh, Dave Montgomery to find pay dirt. 
Um, I think it's possible. And and I think just because of the layoff and him being gone, I wish it was more like plus 120 and above. And then I'd say it's real good value, but yeah. ugh, it's not the best value. So I wouldn't go buck wild. I'd say like half a unit. I'm going to take on Monty touchdown plus 110 because there was a stretch there. It was almost, he was almost for whatever it's worth a lock to find yeah. Hader, right? Cause he's their goal line. He's their number one back, their goal line back that, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple mouths to feed, but now if he's truly healthy and he's playing, he's going to get the touches in the goal line. So Monty TD, I like, I like the lions. I think this is a game where later today I'll try to throw together a small SGP because I think this is where yards could be put up by Amon Ra, by Laporta. You'll probably get some Keenan Allen yards. So I think there's going to be yards to go around. This might be a nice SGP type of game to build around. So, Sure, yeah. Um, just a, to your point about the Ava Montgomery, he, he's been limited with injuries, but when he's played, he scored in every single game except for one, and the one game he missed was the game in which he got hurt. We had six carries. Prior to that, Chiefs. Game one, one touchdown. Yep. Next week, one touchdown. Next week, three touchdowns. Next game, one touchdown. Like, he just scores. That's what he does. Um, yeah. And I think he's going to get go, go right back into the role that he was playing. So I agree with you. I like that. For I didn't even think it was plus money. I, I should have looked into that. The, I would, the plus 110, I think, is, is pretty good. Because you'll never get plus money for him. Yeah, exactly. Elsewhere. Yeah. You just did because he's he's been hurt. So yeah. I think he's going to go right back into the role. Um, so anyways, next up, Giants, Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, 17 and a half point underdogs is what the Giants are. That is still not enough points for what the Cowboys are going to do to the Giants. Um, so what do you got in this? I, I, I'm going to cringe and I know people are going to cringe when I say this, but I think that spread is not high enough, surprisingly. And I Should actually like am 24 and a half. <laughs> I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to swallow real hard and close my eyes and hope this is not a Dak Prescott dud, but I think I think there's actually a little value in minus 17 and a half. As weird as that sounds, there's nothing that tells me that they're going to be able to keep pace with an even average showing on a Dallas offense that I'm going to roll Dallas Cowboys minus 17 and a half. I'm just going to say it right now. I am going to go Cowboys with that enormous spread. I don't know yeah, how I they mean, up. I don't know how. When the Cowboys win, generally they annihilate teams. Week one against the Cowboys or against the Giants, 40 to nothing. Week two against the Jets, 30 to 20. Uh, week four against the uh, Patriots, 38 to three. Uh, two weeks ago against the um, against the Rams, 43 to 20. They just annihilate teams when they win big. So yeah, I I I don't have anything on the spread. I think I think I might when we when we hop off take the Cowboys or yeah the Cowboys minus 17 and a half. Um, this one, and real quick, you could get, I guess, plus 115 on, uh, I guess I'm assuming that's Hard Rock um, uh, for okay. Mo uh, Mo um, Monty D. Montgomery touchdown. That's so, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, for this one, for Giants, Cowboys, I have my third of three pumped up props. Tony Pollard, 100 plus rushing yards, plus 375 odds at Caesars. So the risk here is that it's 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter and he doesn't touch the ball again. So I'm, I'm not going to tell you this is without risk. But I do love situations like this. It's like the ultimate you have to take your Pepto-Bismol and, and know that it's going to feel gross because this past five games, 47, 29, 30, 53, 51 rushing yards. It's been disgusting. But despite yeah. that, his over-under is 70. And I love situations like that because people are going to be like, oh, they, these books are dumb. Like, why are they pricing his over under at 70 if he's been terrible? Yeah. And they're going to hammer the under. To me, generally, the books are not dumb more often than not. Sometimes they are, and you can pick off situations. I don't think that's the that's the case here. I think that their Cowboys know they need to get uh, the running game going if they want to have any success, and they can't keep struggling as much as they are. And their offensive line is getting healthy. Uh, Tyron Smith was back, and he was awesome. Last week against the Eagles, they couldn't do anything against him. People were saying that was like one of the best games he's played in years. Um, and the Giants, assuming that they, the Cowboys give Tony Pollard relatively a, a higher workload than normal, and not the normal, they don't, they don't, they don't completely split carries. Is what I'm saying. The yeah. Giants give up 127 rushing yards per game. It's 25th in the NFL. 4.6 yards per attempt. It's 29th. And just rushing DVOA in general gives them the 28th ranked rushing defense. So if Pollard can get 15 carries, I think he could break a couple and get us to 100 yards. Um, this is one that I would recommend lat laddering it. So I would take his 
his main line and I'll ladder it up to 100 because I do think that he's going to have a big game. And I think that this is a get right game for Tony Pollard. Um, gotcha. So Scott asking why I moved on from Ajdim. Uh, I was laid off. They were just kind of, uh, they were they were going with a different strategy in terms of how they had content creators. So they went with part-time people. Uh, so that's what I, that, yeah, that's why I no longer work there. My setup, I don't, to be honest, I don't hundred percent understand the question. Um, my setup is basically what it was before. I still have and use the product. So nothing about what I do is different. I'm just not with HDM anymore. Um, all right. Next game in our second to last one, another kind of gross slate. Um, Commanders, Seahawks. I have a player prop in this one. Terry McLaurin over 59 and a half receiving yards. It's minus 115, both at DraftKings and MGM. Last I checked, I'm not sure if it's changed since we've been on here. Um, Terry McLaurin has quietly been pretty good the past couple of games. He's hit this number at five out of his last six. Now he hasn't had a blow up game, so nobody really talks about him. Also, the commanders are irrelevant and they're they're not really bad. They're also not good. So they're like the worst possible team you can be in the NFL. Um, especially with Ron Rivera, who's a loser head coach. But regardless, I had to get my shots in there. Um, he had a quiet start to the year. I think he missed it in the first three games, but he's hit it in five of six since. And he's he's been good. Like how has been hit or miss, but I think he learned that if you hyper targets uh, scary Terry, good things are going to happen. And the Seahawks, the way you beat them are always through the air. They're really good against the run. They're not as good at, at through the air. There is a little bit of risk with rain here, but it's supposed to be light rain as of right now. So it's not supposed to affect passing that much. Sure. Uh, so I like, I thought about pumping up scary Terry, but he just doesn't have those stealing games. So I, I, I thought it was, I didn't, I didn't do it, but I do really like his main line. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, for this game, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of keeping it simple this week, but uh, I was very selective in props, so I've been focusing more on main lines this week. I am going to just take the the Seahawks at uh, minus five and a half. So getting them under a touchdown, under a touchdown with a missed field goal. So to me, give that to me. I'll, I'll take that at uh, minus five and a half, and you can still even grab that at a basically – Minus 110, even on uh, points bet, not my favorite book, but uh, enough that I could probably sprinkle a little bit, even though I'm limited over there. So, um, so yeah, Seahawks minus five and a half at home. Uh, I'll take it. So that's, I'm going to keep it simple on this game. Yeah, fair. I don't have anything on the main line. I think I, if I had to, I think I would actually take, take the opposite. I think the commanders keep it close, but I don't have a strong feeling on that. But yeah, Jeffrey in the comments, scary. Terry overs are scary since Hal likes to play with his food. That's true. But, <laughs> But look at his last six games. Um, I was trying to type his name, and I literally started typing in scary. Um, his last six games, he's had 86. Um, oh, it was over under, I think. Maybe it went up because I locked it in this morning at 59 and a half. Let me see if it's if it's still there because right now, props.cash is saying that it's at 63 and a half. If that's the case, that makes it a little bit scarier. Um, but let's see. No, you can still take it at – okay. No, you can still take it at 59 and a half. So anyways – his last six games, 86, 49. So that's the one he missed. And then 81, 90, 63, 73. He hasn't gone over 90. He hasn't hit 100 yet this year. So that's why I think like from a, a pumped up perspective, I wouldn't touch it. But he has been consistent with getting yards. And his targets are finally evening out as well. Now that I think, again, they just learned, oh, he's really good. Like week one, four targets. Week two, six targets. Week three, six targets. And then it's like 10 then five, but then 11, nine, 12, seven. It's like, oh yeah, this guy's actually awesome and we should continue to feed him. That's why I like, that's why I like Scary Terry in that one. Um, last game and boy, is this a hell of a Sunday night football game. Jets Raiders. Um, what do you have for this incredible, incredible football game? I, I feel moderately confident in amidst this brutal ugliness that um, I'm going to take the Jets money line. Okay. Minus 110. I'm going <laughs> to... Well, you feel left. confident <laughs> that you're going to take the Jets money line. Not confident that they win, but confident um, that you will that's, take that, the That's probably the more accurate way to say it. And that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> I okay, look. It's gonna it's gonna be ugly. Um, you know, but look, the, the Raiders are a mess and they're just a general mess, even though their record, like I will say, look, they're it's not like their season's done done, but they're just like a mess, okay? But the Jets are a mess when it comes to their quarterback. Um, 
but you still got some nice pieces there. So I, I just, again, it's, it's just, I have more faith that as a team, as a whole, their defense is decent, solid, I, more than decent. They're solid. Their offense has some nice pieces. They just are missing the glue, which is the quarterback who is useless basically, but they have been in most games. Okay. And so when you give me all those intangibles against somehow a rate, I'm surprised the Raiders record is what it is, honestly. Um, and yes, you know, you got some nice pieces there with Crosby who causes constant pressure and the nuisance. He's like a freight train. God, he's kind of annoying. Yeah, to me, he's, but he's awesome. Yeah. He's good though. He's really good. And yeah. then of course you have a stud like Devante who's throwing pissy fits and rightly so I'd be throwing a fit too. They got nice pieces too. Don't get me wrong. I just, I don't think they got it together and I don't think they're a cohesive unit where I do think the Jets are a cohesive unit that just happens to have a bad captain at the helm with Zach Wilson. But between the two, they're just a better team, in my opinion. I think it's going to be grimy and gross, but I'm going to just roll with, oh, the Jets money line. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I don't. That's not my play. I would take the Jets money line, too. I also like the fact that the Raiders got their, like, bump from not having Josh McDaniels be their head coach last week. And that's yeah. generally, it's generally like literally the first week with that, with the, without your head coach. And then, yep. and then it kind of goes back down from there. Um, I have a player prop. Yeah. In this one as well, Jacoby Myers under 40 and a half receiving yards. It's minus 115 at bed MGM. M- Myers has actually had a better year than Devonte Adams, but yeah. it's, f- it's kind of going away, especially with, with Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. Like Aiden O'Connell, it just isn't it in their passing game. He was getting Myers was getting a million targets with Jimmy G. It's not been the case with O'Connell. He's played three games and he's had 33, 50, and 38. So he's gone over in one of the three games. That was no offense. That was against the Bears. His passing defense is terrible. They were also losing that entire game against the Bears. So they had to pass it a ton against the Jets. A, the Jets have an awesome defense. And B, the Jets are probably not going to be winning a lot or winning the entire game. They pro- probably going to win, but it's going to be like seven to three basically for the entire game. So they're still going to yeah. need to throw it. Yeah. Uh, or, or they're not going to need to throw it every single play like they did against the Bears. So I didn't put it. I think this, this is this is not a smash play for me. I put a half unit on it. It's, I like I'm the McLaurin one. I'll put a full unit. I'm very confident in that. This is not the case with Jacoby Myers, but to have to have a pick out there, that was what I had in this one. Nice. It's it's going to be ugly and. I know we keep saying it and we're getting cliche about it, but man, you you are right though. Some of these slates have been just, the product is kind of brutal, but the crazy part is people will still watch. I'll still watch. The NFL knows. <laughs> and I, I will say what's happened this year is a reason why you should not expand the NFL teams to more, to more like more franchises because there's not even enough quarterbacks for the current number of teams we have in the NFL. You add more teams then you're going to get more slop fests like what we've had yeah. this basically this entire year. Yeah. So, all right, we can move on. It's officially time for degeneracy. We've got, okay. I, think, I think we've gotten two degenerate plays to hit. One was for plus 20,000, which basically funded our entire year. So that Pretty was much. nice. Yeah. Um, I was trying to think of stuff that we we're aligned on in terms of player props. And Montgomery seems to be the one, the smash play that we both like Montgomery to score. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, um, outside of that, my three pumped up plays were Ayuk 100 plus, Shahid 60 plus, and um, Tony Pollard 100 plus. And in terms of your player props, you liked Moreau, but that was such a low one. That's a high risk one, yeah, yeah. Um, and then what else? I was trying to, I was trying to remember. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm trying to think of, of parlay pieces. What else? What else do you like? For this for the slate okay so let's do this i would say um we agree monty's good value and i would i would say moderate risk i wouldn't say high risk right okay so well, well touchdowns are kind of high risk actually but yeah um yeah but I, I like it okay so monty to score we know that the Cowboys are going to be able to put put up a ton. You were right on Ferguson last week. Unfortunately, we whiffed on the other ones. But um, yeah, hmm. So, I, I mean, mean, Pollard like, is God. He's so juiced. He's, Pollard is minus so one ninety. I just yeah. That, I love Pollard, but minus yeah. one ninety is just it's just not too even much. worth. It's not worth it. Um, yeah. I mean, what about um, 
like Taysom Hill, if you if you want to put him into like I I know we we talked about him to score it. Like these parlays, we kind of get a little a little bit risky. So we could add Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, I don't mind that. I mean, he's just been consistent. So Taysom Hill, Monty. That right now gets us at plus four sixty seven, which seems kind of lame for yeah two plus money parlays, but that's all right. Do you um, like um, Ayuk to find Pater since you're pretty high on him today? Yeah, I have his yards. I don't have anything from a touchdown perspective. He is plus 175, so that is pretty juicy. That gets us to plus 1459 for those three. It's not bad. Should we just uh, should we just keep it at that? I'd say so. And I say we build one with props and spreads and money lines as a more okay. like where, you know, touchdowns are so tough. I mean, it's yeah, just like, are, it's like, uh, yeah. it's like a gamble. So, sure. okay. So Ayuk, Monty and Taysom Hill. Yes. I locked that in. I'll tweet it. I'll tweet this stuff out okay. as well. So everybody can, can officially tail, but yeah, that's, that's what we're going with is for scores. Mon- yeah. Okay. And then, so, all right. So do, do we want to do, I think we should do two total. So one more. Yeah. So, so let's do, yeah, let's do one now with props and spread. So no scorers. So we don't have to worry about scoring. Just, they, okay. just we just need the performance from the players and the team. So nothing with touchdowns. So, all right. So money line plays that we liked um, lions Steelers. Now there are some other like, heavier favorite ones, but the, uh, like, you know, we could do Ravens, but they're minus 295. We could do Bengals, but they're minus 250. We like Titan spread, right? To cover that or we were, yeah, but they're, that? yeah, we might need to do a pumped up one. Cause they're plus two and a half. And I want that oh, field goal. Yeah. Yeah. So we could do, let's see if we get Titans three and a half, it's minus minus one thirty two. It's not bad. So we can add that. And then, I mean, we um, could throw in non-pumped versions of your player props, like just their regular lines. You know what I mean? Just to, yeah. if you feel confident about mixing it in here. So Lions, Steelers, Titans, plus three and a half. Um, yeah, and we can do, um, it was rushing for Pollard, 69 Pollard. and a half. Okay. I say we leave out Ayuk because we already have him for a touchdown. The other yeah. one was Sh- was Shahid, but Shahid it almost doesn't make sense to just do his main line. We should either pump it up or we should just leave it alone. What's like a what's an alt line not at the sixty from DraftKings? Like on FanDuel, is there like an alt? So uh, forty plus at plus one sixteen. Forty plus. Yeah. 40 plus. Okay. So if we add that, this is a bigger one, plus seventeen hundred, right now. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not terrible. And this is what? How many legs is this? It's five legs. Do you so, like your Kareem Hunt one enough? Or is, are you a little worried about that one? Because that's a low um, rushing total, like you said. It's a low rushing total. I actually would take – I'm more confident in the Jamison Williams under than I am. The Jamison Williams under? Okay. Yeah. That gets us to plus thirty, plus 3,000. Ooh, Wow. I have a five dollar free bet, so I might just put I might just put that on this. What time? What time is the Chargers game? Is that in the? It's, it's the afternoon slate, so it's at four four Eastern. Okay, so you I was about to say it's hard to single that out as like a hedge position. So okay, because there's other concurrent games with uh, yeah the, the yeah. Dallas game and stuff. But okay, all right, Jameson under. Yeah, that's that's huge now. Now we're crossing three thousand. Okay. Plus three thousand. We could do one more, or we could, or we could leave it. I'll leave this one up to you. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, you could even put a couple bucks in it to be huge. So I'd say that under is enough of a sweat at this point. So it's just like, please don't pass it to him. <laughs> it is an under. Yeah, it is an under. <laughs> it's like if we. This, this is getting a little silly, but if we add the um, Cowboys and wow, Cowboys actually makes their odds worse. That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> If you add the Cowboys <laughs> money line, it literally makes the odds worse. That's which funny. Is so stupid. That, so, but I say, if we add the Bengals, we can get it to basically plus forty five hundred. Just money line, just straight money up money line, straight up oh, win. Throw throw that in. Fine, sure. Let's go. You sold me already. Then that's yeah, not even spread. You're saying money line. Correct. Okay. Straight up. Yeah. Okay, I'm sold. 
I'm sorry. All right. I put We're a five dollar bonus bet on it. This one's a little bit more ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's also, it's also safer, and it also it's like put like don't put more than five bucks on this one. Basically. Yeah, yeah. You need Shahid to have a solid above average game, and you need William Jameson Williams to basically be ignored again for a game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I will, I will tweet this out. And yeah, anything else for tonight? Do you have any of your long shot plus 2,000 type plays? or uh, No, I'll try week? to cook up something next week. I was a little too focused building up my new uh, YouTube series for the Maximum Grind that I didn't get a chance to put my DJ sure. hat on this week. To And like I said, see, I actually put thought into the DJ stuff, so I'm not going to just name something random. So I'll, I'll put some thought into a long, long, long shot for next week. So Sure. Um, real quick, two comments that I want to get to. Why is everybody bought in on the Vikings? I think it's just because they love Josh Dobbs as a person. I also think the Vikings have won, what, four straight at this point. They started, I think, 0-3. Now they're 5-4. and four. Um, And then it was just an exciting win last week. Um, Big Will, we got two plays. Uh, I'll tweet them out if you follow me on Twitter, but if you want them real quick. The first one is a parlay of Montgomery – Dave Montgomery, Taysom Hill, and Brandon Ayuk to score straight up. That was plus 14.59. And then the last one, the second one that we just built, is a seven-leg one. <laughs> you might need to write it down. But we have the Lions money line, the Steelers money line, the Bengals money line. We have the Titans plus three and a half. We have Jamison Williams under 15 and a half receiving yards. We have Rashid Shahid, 40 plus receiving yards, and Pollard over 69 and a half rushing yards. Um, no stat leader degeneracy today, unfortunately. I, I didn't have anything. Uh, I just had my pumped up props, and Parlay Doc didn't have anything. So, unfortunately, can't help you there. But hopefully, we can get one of these two. Maybe both would be nice parlays to hit. All right. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for the comments. Parlay Doc, as always, appreciate you joining me. And we'll see you guys next Sunday.